Hey, what's going on guys? Dana from ModBot here, and today we are gonna do something kind of fun. Uh, when I got into 3D printing, moisture was certainly not something that I thought about, but as I've been in 3D printing for quite a long time now and kind of learned that certain materials like TPUs, PVAs, and nylons are extremely prone to absorbing moisture, I decided it would be fun to kind of revisit this and see how much this roll of material has been affected by moisture. Uh, this spool of Saint Smart TPU I bought on Amazon probably three years ago, and it has traveled and moved with me twice. It has never been sealed, it has been completely open. So today we're gonna kind of test out and see how much moisture has affected this material material. So my plan is twofold. The first part of it is going to be to print out with the filament in its current state, kind of a round gasket uh, type print, followed by a little benchy. Then we're going to go ahead and throw this in my makeshift filament dryer that I put together probably four, five, six months ago and I've never used, so it'll be exciting to use that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bake this overnight, then we will go ahead and reprint this in uh, the exact same settings, nothing will change, the same exact round gasket type thing and the benchy, but we'll see how much better the quality looks after, uh, before and after the print. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I am really, really shocked by the results. Um, when I first was printing with this material on the uh, Sidewinder, 
I almost could hear the moisture boiling off of it and I tried to actually get a little audio snippet of that but when I put my mic next to it it nearly stopped so I don't know if I really got much of it but it was it had moisture in it like there's no question there's no doubt in my mind that there was at least some level of moisture in it because I could hear tiny little crackling sounds coming off of the hot end and I was expecting the print to turn out just very poorly but the gasket or the round uh, TPU print that I initially did turned out absolutely amazing here's the first print um, seriously like it looks great this is as good as any flexible filament print I've ever done. Um, the only thing on it at all is that where the seal is or where the start and stop portion is of each layer, there's a little bit of hairs which can easily be cleaned up, but it is really minimal. Like I don't think anyone would argue that this is not a solid uh, uh, print. So I was really mind blown by that. So then I went ahead and printed the Benchy out, which the Benchy turned out uh, quite poorly, which I really expected. I don't print a whole lot with flexibles in general, so I'm sure my settings were not correct. Um, and I could have tuned them a much, much further, but this is kind of more what I was expecting. And so when I saw this and saw all the blobs and all the stringing and things like that, I thought to myself, cool, once I go ahead and dry this material out, it's gonna look so much better. The Benchy is gonna look awesome. But that's not what happened at all. <laughs> the print itself of the little rubbery gasket portion to me turned out pretty similar to the before dry. Um, there is, there was actually a layer shift on this one, which I found ironic because you think that this one was, I was expecting just, you know, this beautiful print and I got a layer shift, but I'm going to go ahead and attribute that to something to do with the machine and not the actual filament being dry. The seam portion of it that had a little bit of hairs on the first print has no hairs on this one. So that definitely uh, printed a little bit better. But one thing, cause I showed this to Erin and she looked at it and saw that uh, I don't know how well this will translate on camera, but the actual color of the filament is quite different. Um, the black before being dried is much more of like a matte or satin type. Um, while on this one, it's much more of a vibrant, uh, glossy black. So something to do with the moisture actually had an effect on the color. And again, I don't think on camera you can see very much. I'll kind of just have to take my word for it, but the one that is printed out after the fact looks much better to me. It just looks like a fresher, newer piece of plastic while the other one does look a bit, um, I don't know, older or you know used. But kind of the biggest shocker to me was with the Benchy. I was expecting a much better Benchy and although certain parts of this Benchy to me look better, like the spout looks a little bit better, I think there's slightly less stringing. Um, I took some side-by-side -side photos that I'll go ahead and throw over and kind of let you guys come up to your own conclusion on uh, which one you think actually looks better. Um, but it's not nearly as drastic of a difference as I was expecting. I really thought that it would make a huge difference and that this Benchy would just be like beautiful, maybe have a little bit of stringing because retraction was really, really low. Um, but I was expecting a lot of the blobs to be gone and that's just not the case. It still has a lot of the imperfections and blobs and crazy stringing that the pre-dried version has. So um, this to me was, was really interesting because I was expecting you know, from spending 24 hours drying out the material, having a huge uh, difference in print quality. And again, this is just one isolated incidence with these TPUs, which I'm not sure the exact settings. I've had them for so long. I don't know the shore hardness or exactly what the composition uh, composition is of these. And I'm not saying that TPU should not be dried out because there's so many factors other than that at play. Like I'm in Southern California. It's not exactly the most uh, humid of climates. It's actually pretty dry here, although I would argue my apartment is incredibly humid. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to me that it had such little effect on the finalized print. Now, I think that something certainly like PVA or nylon would have much more uh, a drastic of a difference between pre and post drying, which I'll probably be revisiting this to test it out. Uh, in the near future here, but yeah for TPU especially again this this TPU is not like yeah I've had it open for a month I've had this filament for years just sitting on racks sitting in shelves sitting under printers like Never have I done any kind of treatment to it So I was expecting 
to see a huge difference between the before and after, which I just really didn't get. So uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think, whether you've experienced similar with TPUs, whether you think that there's something else I should test out kind of between the two, if there's like, you know, a test that you'd be curious to see, uh, because it was kind of just something fun that I've always wanted to do. And TPUs was definitely one of the kind of the three materials that I've always been told is, you know, prone to a lot of moisture absorption. Uh, absorption. And yeah, again, with my testing, again, just one isolated incident, but it did not uh, kind of, the end result was not what I originally expected. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think again in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you are interested in supporting the channel. Patreon links will be down below. We've got some awesome stickers and really cool rewards, and I've got some pretty exciting different style projects that I'm going to be working on over the next weeks and months here. So hopefully you guys will enjoy these uh, videos and not just doing the 3D printer reviews, but a little bit more projects and testing and things like that. So uh, on that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.